What's up guys and girls, this is Glenn here again with another Rope Rage video and today we're going to be looking at three reasons why jumping rope backwards is a pain in the neck. <sighs> Seriously. But we're also going to look at how you can make it simple. So if you've been jumping rope for a while, you've been in this skipping game for a while now, you've experimented, you've practiced, you've whipped yourself a few times, and you've learned the ropes, you might, you know, feel you want to take it to the next level. You might want to test yourself with a new challenge. And a great way to do this is to start jumping rope backwards. This has incredible effects on your awareness of the rope, your coordination. Um, but it is a bit of a pain in the to learn when you first start out. So um, in this video, we're gonna be looking at the three main reasons why jumping rope backwards is difficult, why it can be a pain in the neck. Um, and as with everything, it, it starts off difficult. So encouragement is there to just continue, keep pressing forward with it and keep going forward with it. The great thing is that you can do pretty much any technique that you can do forwards, you can do backwards. And this is actually going to be the start of a new mini series of videos in which I'm going to break down all these jump rope techniques um, backwards, your, you know, your crossovers, your double unders, your double under crossovers, your side swings, the lot. Um, this is more of an introductory video and it will really set the, the foundation for jumping rope backwards. So make sure you're subscribed. Also, also, we just breached a thousand subscribers, which is nuts, which is crazy. Um, I mean, just the knowledge that people give a damn about what I'm talking about really helps, so I appreciate that. Thanks a lot for doing so. Um, I hope I can continue to help out, and we can all have a jolly good time with our jump rope journey. Anyway, back to the task at hand. So, there are three main three main things, three main sticking points. Um, the first of those is what I will call tracking of the rope or awareness of the rope's rotation. And the best way to explain this is to think of the fact that when you're skipping forwards, after a while you get used to the timing of when to jump and you may not realize this but what's happening is that you're subconsciously tracking the path of the rope with your peripheral vision okay you don't look you don't watch the rope the whole way as it turns but your peripheral vision catches it as it rotates and therefore you, you get a better idea <laughs> you get a better idea of um, when to jump you know that the rope's gonna be passing underneath the feet at approximately this second and so you can ready yourself to jump and you know having this peripheral vision is it's very nice it's something you can you can rely on it's uh, it's something that gives you some comfort you know it's like it's like being snug in your duvet on a cold winter's day and everything's going crazy outside but you're nice and snug you're nice and comfortable with your peripheral vision however when you start to skip backwards you've crossed over to the dark side. You're in the midst of the unknown. And damn it, your peripheral vision can't save you then. So how do you get around it? 
We need to learn to track the path of the rope and get to a point where depending on how quickly we turn the rope through our wrist rotations, we can gauge when we need to jump. And this takes time, okay? It feels very awkward when you're first starting out because you can't see the rope. You're almost trusting yourself. Trust is a key word. You have to trust um, the rotation of the rope and trust that you're gonna time the jump correctly. So one exercise you can do to work on your tracking is just um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna stand still. You're going to raise your heels and try and catch the rope with each rotation behind you okay so the aim is to catch the rope underneath your heels um, don't go crazy just yet just do the one rep step through start again do another rep step through and start again okay you don't have your peripheral vision to track the rope you have to trust yourself and you build this trust by running through this drill over and over if that rope whacks you on the back of the legs you know that you haven't timed it just right and you've got a bit of work to do and after you've done that for a while work on getting a couple of jumps in and then snapping and then build up and so on and so forth so the second reason why jumping rope backwards is so difficult and it's such a pain in the neck is hand positioning now if you've been jumping rope forwards um, all your life all your jump rope career you're used to having your hands in front of you just slightly in front of your hips and when you're jumping rope backwards it must be the same this is the problem this is this is the area where it gets a bit it gets a bit hazy and people lose their way you need to have your your hands positioned in the same area okay the issue that a lot of people have is that because jumping rope backwards involves um, bringing a rope towards you, what they do is they tend to extend their hands far out in front of them. And the problem with that is that you're changing the um, you're changing the center of rotation of the rope. You're no longer in that center. You're actually you're not giving yourself a circle to jump in now. You've given yourself a semicircle, half a circle to jump with. You've given yourself much less space to jump with and that's why the rope tends to cut a lot of people on the backs of the legs when they start jumping rope backwards. You want to have those hands positioned nice and tucked in so the way to think about it is you want to think about pointing your elbows backwards okay and keeping your hands tucked in. Using that snapping motion with the elbow to um, power the rope Okay, if you've got your hands extended out in front of you, you don't have much snapping or snap potential. You don't have um, much movement you can do in that elbow joint. So uh, really make sure your, your hands are positioned in the right place. So you want to focus on bringing, that, bringing your hands in towards you, having them on, your front, on the frontal plane of your body. Um, making sure you've got them positioned correctly and um, at that point everything should be plain sailing. That centre of rotation will remain similar to how it is when you're skipping forwards and you'll have a full circle to jump in rather than having a semicircle which restricts you. Just this small tweak should help immeasurably with your jumping rope backwards. When, when you've got your hands positioned in that frontal plane with the elbows pointing backwards, it might feel awkward to begin with, and it's supposed to, okay? It's, it's a strange position to have your hands in, especially if, you, if you're used to jumping rope forwards and not having to tuck in so much. But we need to, as I mentioned in previous videos, and I will continue to hammer on, we need to think more about our rope handle positioning than our hands, okay? Because it's the rope that's gonna turn. You know, it's not your hands that are doing the turning, it's that rope that's gonna turn. So you just need to focus on making sure that rope is turning in the right place. It's similar to double dutch jump rope, okay? And although I hate double dutch jump rope, a lot of people don't know this, but I really, I really don't like double dutch. Um, I know it's an aspect of jump rope with a long history, but I don't know, it's just, anyway, each to their own. You've got your two um, teammates turning that rope 
either side they're focusing on turning that rope all you have to focus on if you're the jumper and you're jumping inside the rope is um, clearing it and you trust you trust your teammates to turn that rope correctly and you just focus on clearing it this is the idea we want to bring into our jump rope game here our single jump rope game think of your hands as your teammates your double dutch teammates your hands need to um, take care of turning that rope in the right manner making sure it's turning in nice big circles and then you just have to focus on your footwork jumping in and out correctly whatever it, whatever it is you're doing your double unders your crossovers whatever so the last point is a bit of a, it's a bit out there it's not it's not as technical as the other points but um, one thing that I mentioned that I've written about in my book which is coming out soon it's called Rage Redefined look out for that um, it's really going to break down the, the training mentality um, little secrets little nuanced uh, technical aspects that you can't really see on video um, that will really uh, boost your progress but anyway one of the things that I talk about in that book is the two main aspects of jump roping one of them which is the more obvious one is the physical aspect the technical aspect you know turning your rope um, jumping at the correct speed um, you know nice small rotations of the rope rather than large ones the usual stuff but an aspect that is overlooked quite a lot is the mental aspect okay and one of the main underpinning aspects mentally is fear you can have someone who's very good physically, very good technically, but because of mental blocks, fear blocks that they have in their minds, they can't go as far as they have the potential to go. Um, they can't do as much as, as their, their physicality could allow them if they just let themselves free in their, in, in their mind. Also, you can have the person who, is, who has all the mentality, but not the physical or technical aspects of the game. And you might see this person. This person um, is, that, is that warrior, that person who will continually work at it, will continue making those mistakes, and um, will continue observing bad habits. They'll continue to slap the rope across themselves and uh, make mistakes continually and say, yeah, I'm on my, I'm on my way. Um, and. Although it is true that you have to be pers persistent to an extent, um, you don't want to be that person walking around with slash marks all across the chest or across the face. And nobody wants a rope to consistently slap them in the face. And once you can overcome those mental blocks, it can, it can really set you apart. You can really start to move on and progress like you probably never expected. So um, in this case, the fear aspect is that when you transition from jumping rope forwards to jumping rope backwards, if you make a mistake, that rope is most likely going to slap you in the face or on the chest. And these are the softer parts um, of the upper body. It's the soft underbelly in the animal kingdom. But rather than hitting you on the back of the head or on your back, that rope is destined to come because it's rotating forwards it's going to come up towards you and if you're jumping at high speed which is a necessity for a lot of techniques namely the double under or the double under crossover if you're jumping at high speed and you mess up that rope is going to slap you in the face or in the chest and believe me i know it um so what do you do well you start jumping rope with a mask and with a bulletproof vest. No, I'm kidding. You don't do that. You don't do that. I mean, unless you want to, if that's the sort of thing you want, um, you're welcome to do that. So, with fear, how to overcome it. Really, it, it, with this training, you need to build up confidence. That's the only way. You need to build up the confidence um, to try things, you know, to try and push just that little bit faster and that little bit harder and the way to do this is to a start really slowly start slowly build confidence in in what you can do and then if you've built confidence in being able to do one thing you can trust yourself in that you can do the same in doing something more difficult you can build confidence in doing more advanced techniques um, the second re the second way to do this is really to get to a point where you 
trust that you can bounce back regardless. Do you know what I mean? And I'm not saying anyone should walk around um, whipping, or should jump around whipping themselves intentionally, but understand that that rope's gonna hit you a few times. And as you start to learn, it's gonna hit you, um, but it will hurt for a second and then it will be all right kind of thing. If you can get your head over that, um, you will free yourself from that mental block that keeps you back from going that little bit faster because that rope might hit you and um, you can really push forward. So, why should you start jumping rope backwards? Some people might say it's overkill, it's unnecessary, you're just showing off. Um, and while it might be a good way to show off, it's also advisable as it builds your awareness of the rope. You're becoming more familiar with the rope. You don't, you're not one dimensional. You don't just understand the rope when it's moving forwards, but you also understand it when it's moving backwards. And it's a great way to broaden your skill set. Um, you're hitting different muscle groups, mental muscles, as well as physical um, muscles in the arms, having to tuck the hands back a little bit more. So definitely give it a crack. It will be, um, tough to start out with but just be patient follow these steps revisit the video if you need to and as I say there's gonna be more videos discussing each technique as we go along the double under the double under crossover the crossover the side swing all of them um, breaking them down so with that I'm sure we'll be able to get it in no time so that's it for today um, if you found this video helpful drop a like drop a comment let me know um, if you've ever tried doing it backwards before and let me know how you've got on if you're doing it currently let me know how you're getting on or if you feel it's unnecessary I want to hear about that as well um, but really it's just it's really just cool to chat with you guys from time to time so yeah drop me a line I see them all I reply to them all um, and until next time all the best with your training and stay ready to the hand it happens it happens okay so